headquarters of Telesur English in Quito, Ecuador. This is from the South. I am Doris Polo. We begin in Bolivia, where the city of El Alto protested throughout the night against the massacre of local residents at the nearby San Cata fuel depot. Demonstrators chanting, Añez is a murderer, gathered to condemn the killing of at least three people in a military and police operation that involved soldiers firing on the crowd from helicopters. Reports indicate at least 30 people were injured. Protesters had been blocking access to the fuel distribution center for several days. They have deleted what our brothers have posted on social media. They are making it disappear. It's not fair. We, as citizens of El Alto, we have to revolutionize. We have to fight for our brothers and sisters and for what we want, a future. We don't want a divided Bolivia. We want a Bolivia united and strong. That's what we have to achieve. Long life the city of El Alto. Following the repression in El Alto, the president of the Senate from Evo Morales' mass party called for the repeal of the decree legitimizing armed force in the name of supposed public order introduced by the de facto government. We demand that decree 7048 be revoked, which gives them carte blanche to kill their brothers. We call on the armed forces and the Bolivian police to reflect and withdraw. And we call on all the social movements that are now mobilizing to stand down. We don't want any more deaths. We don't want any more blood. We are ready to work flat out to ensure new elections. Let's take a closer look at the events in Sincata. Campesinos and indigenous communities that were in the vicinity of the state oil plant in Sencata, as part of a day of resistance in El Alto, were violently repressed by police and military forces. This included the disproportionate deployment of tanks and helicopters, as well as the apparent use of lethal weapons. We came out here today because there is no gasoline in the city below. In 2003, the same happened. But today they have come to repress us and have started to shoot straight at us. I almost got hit by a rubber bullet, but they have injured some of us already. Low flying fighter planes were used to intimidate the residents of El Alto, who were protesting outside the fuel plant of the state oil company, nationalized by the government of President Evo Morales. The army has come out without any reason by using the recent decree to intimidate us. There are two helicopters that are shooting down on us. We cannot allow this situation to continue. We cannot allow this lady to do this to us. Opposite to the version of the de facto government, the people of El Alto reported several dead and wounded who were taken to local health centers. Relatives of the victims say that the fatal wounds were caused by firearms. <laughs> They will be treated for what appear to be bullet wounds. These are penetrating wounds that form a circular hole in their bodies, but we must determine the weather. The Ombudsman's office has reported a number of dead protesters that matches the version of the people of El Alto. According to the preliminary information, the three people who died suffered from bullet impact. It is important here that the Institute of Forensic Investigation clarify this fact. We are asking the Public Prosecutor's Office in this role as investigator to immediately clarify this fact and to punish those responsible. La Presidenta del Senado, Monica Eva Copa. Senate President Monica Eva Copa condemned the violence in Sencata while urging the immediate withdrawal of the armed forces. We ask to the military forces withdraw to their barracks. We do not want more violence. We do not want more blood. 
violencia contra las manifestaciones y vigilias que... Despite the repression and violence against protesters in Bolivia, various campesino and indigenous communities, as well as social movements and trade unions, confirm they will continue to fight until the country's constitutional order is restored. Now, the de facto government that installed itself after the coup d'etat deposing President Evo Morales is trying to consolidate itself in flagrant disregard of the Bolivian constitution. Senator Jenny Nanez, who self-proclaimed herself as president, is seeking to call new elections while bypassing the Legislative Assembly. Our correspondent in La Paz explains. Flag Day in Bolivia, the first public military ceremony since the coup d'etat is held in the Plaza Murillo, now closed to the public. While the soldiers parade behind closed doors, other maneuvers are underway. A presidential decree to override the parliament proposed by former president Jorge Quiroga. If in a few days, not weeks, but a very few days, the Congress doesn't give us new elections with a new electoral curve, then there are ample legal grounds for this to be done by decree. In other words, without the Congress, where the majority no longer matters, according to this candidate who got 4% in October. The movement towards socialism cannot try to use its majority, which no longer corresponds to the current reality, but which is still legal, to impose a law calling elections. It has to be done with all the political actors and institutions, including, of course, the electoral mission of the OAS. Meanwhile, the cabinet chief denounces a plan for assassination and war. We have identified a criminal group that wants to attack President Anis. This is an insurrection. Do you remember the minister whose hands are steeped in blood, who said Bolivia would become another Vietnam? That is what they are trying to do. There are people from Venezuela, Cuba, and Colombia in this. Murillo said he had his own intelligence service. There is military intelligence, the Bolivian Police Intelligence Service, and the private intelligence services, which we set up recently and which work directly with me, as well as regional intelligence units. In the Legislative Assembly, the MAS, with its two-thirds majority, is trying to activate the only democratically elected power that currently exists. Elections are part of our agenda. We have no wish to prevent elections being called. As we have said, the representatives and senators of the movement towards socialism are more than ready to work on a call for elections. We have drawn up an electoral plan, and we are aware that we need to coordinate this with the opposition, who are now in government. And while all this is going on, one passerby gives his view of the situation. Now, you speak in favor of Evo Morales, you are a subversive. There was no fraud, no fraud at all. That's a lie. The OAS is just following the United States. Alejandro Kirk, Telesur La Paz, Bolivia. Still to come, we take a look at the violent repression of protesters in Chile. Stay right where you are. Innovation, science, the technological breakthrough and its influence in society. Viajeros del saber, el futuro está aquí. Ademan. Monday, only on Telesur.
Welcome back. We segue to Latin America. In Chile, police repressed protesters rejecting Sebastian Piñera's government in Santiago's Plaza Italia. A strong riot police contingent prevented the gathering in Plaza Italia with tear gas and water cannons. After a month of protests, people have renamed Plaza Italia Plaza Dignity. The protesters are calling for the president's resignation as well as a constituent assembly that guarantees a new constitution with social improvements and respect for citizens' rights. Public sector workers in Chile have embarked on a 48-hour national strike to demand a raft of reforms. Work stoppages have brought key sectors throughout the country to a standstill. Workers are demanding increases in salaries, better working conditions, and security of tenure. They're also calling for improved services and benefits, including pensions, health, and education. And as pressure mounts on President Sebastian Piñera's overrides abuses committed during month-long protests in Chile, public sector workers put on a music concert to increase awareness about these violations. I'm here in Santiago, and what you see taking place behind me is a music concert called Cau Policanazo. Many public sector workers are taking part in this event, which is indeed a form of music activism. At this moment, the iconic group Iliapu is performing. They've been on the front line of recent protests in Chile. This concert is part of the national strike taking place this Tuesday and Wednesday. Meanwhile, public sector workers also want to have a say in the way money is allocated in the national budget. That will be debated over the next few days. They are specifically demanding a higher percentage allocation for the health sector. Workers are also standing in solidarity with the more than 1,000 victims of human rights abuses and excessive force by the police and military during month-long protests. Those who have been shot at, whether with tear gas or rubber bullets. Health workers in particular are condemning the violent repression they faced at the hands of police who stormed their workplaces during the unrest. And so now pressure is mounting against President Sebastián Piñera, as opposition legislators have formally presented a motion to initiate impeachment proceedings against him. This constitutional accusation is rooted in the many human rights violations committed during the protests. That was our correspondent Leonel Ritamal with that report. The mothers of missing Central American migrants have arrived in Mexico in search of their loved ones who had entered the country and seemingly vanished. A group of around 50 women came to Mexico to look for their missing relatives in prisons like the one in Mexico's Chiapas State. The group is made up of women from various Central American countries. Since its foundation 15 years ago, the group's members have been regularly visiting prisons in Mexico in hope of finding their relatives who had gone missing while trying to reach the United States. In Colombia, around 50 lawmakers met in Santander de Quilichao in the department of Cauca to address the communities experiencing a humanitarian crisis due to the violence and irresponsibility of the Colombian state. Senators held an informal dialogue with indigenous Afro-descendants and campesino communities who demanded guarantees from Congress. Despite the invitation from the group of lawmakers, the Minister of the Interior and the Minister of Defense were absent from the session. During the event, Senator Ivan Cepeda reported the murder of another indigenous person and of five wounded, denouncing that the militarization of the territory does not guarantee security. Staying in Colombia, social movements are denouncing what they say is an unprecedented wave of repression ahead of a major nationwide protest on Thursday. One student organization in Bogota, City in Movement, reported that the police had raided the homes of two of its leaders early on Tuesday morning. Supposedly, they were looking for evidence relating to the planned march. Similar raids were reported in the city of Medellin. Brazil has issued a warrant for the arrest of Paraguay's former president Horacio Cartes as part of an investigation into money or money laundering. Our correspondent Osvaldo Zayas has the details from Asuncion. The Brazilian justice system has issued a warrant for arrest against former Paraguayan president Horacio Cartes for his involvement in the Messer case, which is related to the car wash operation in Brazil. 
Brazilian authorities allege that Cartes provided $500,000 to a criminal organization at the request of Darío Meser, a Brazilian associate who was a fugitive facing corruption charges. The warrant has ruffled feathers in the Paraguayan political scene, as Messer's party holds a significant amount of seats in the Congress. The president of the Congress, Blas Llano, said that Cartes holds privileges and that's why they cannot detain him. Brazilian authorities say that they have asked Interpol to put out a red notice for the arrest of Cartes, but Interpol is yet to respond to the... On to the Caribbean now. A church in Haiti's capital, Port-au-Prince, was filled with wailing mourners who gathered to bury five people killed in anti-government protests. <laughs> Among the dead was 15-year-old Jasmine Pierre. Her father said she was hit by a stray bullet. Hundreds attended the funerals for the teen and four men, three of whom were allegedly shot by police while participating in the protests. More than 40 people have been killed and dozens injured as the demonstrations continue for over two months. Protesters want President Jovenel Moise to resign amid anger over corruption, fuel shortages and ballooning inflation. There was a protest at Fort McLeany and the police arrived on the scene and began shooting at the protesters. My daughter was killed inside my house. We have guaranteed all the people of the nation that the fight will continue, the protest will continue. We will go all the way to the final objective. Dominica remains tense after a standoff between police and protesters on Monday night. Protesters called for the implementation of electoral reforms before general elections on December 6th. In response, Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt has addressed the nation to condemn the intrusion of violence into the election campaign. He said that electoral reform is not the reason behind the protests. Today, nomination day in Dominica, it is my very sad duty to inform you of events that took place last evening from about 7.15 p.m. These events signaled the, the intrusion of violence into the election campaign in a manner that is unfamiliar, unnecessary, and unproductive. Ladies and gentlemen, in 18 days, a general election will be held in Dominica, at which time supporters of the UWP can make their opinions clear in the ballot box. Surely, then, election reform cannot therefore be the real reason for these protests. The main opposition has won Monday's general election in Montserrat. Eastern Taylor Farrell has been sworn in as the country's new premier after Donaldson Romeo suffered defeat at the polls. The opposition party, Movement for Change and Prosperity, won five of the nine seats. That all of us must work together for the common good of this country. Indeed, the task before us is not an easy one. But I want to thank the people of Montserrat for putting their trust and faith in the MCAP and in the MCAP party and to elect us as their leader. We can assure them that we will do everything within our powers to carry out the task that's assigned to us, not for ourselves, but for the benefit of all of us. After the break, we'll hear about the UN's reaction to the new United States position on illegal Jewish settlements in Palestine. We'll be back in no time. A review of the world news that investigates, incites analysis and induces criticism, because every event has a context. Pusimos el punto en el. Dot in the eye. Saturdays. Only on Venezuela.
Welcome back. The Palestine Liberation Organization, or PLO, has strongly condemned the U.S. government's decision to stop seeing Israeli settlements of occupied Palestinian land as illegal. This as the U.S. repudiated a 1978 State Department ruling that held that the occupation of the land was inconsistent with international law. Secretary General of the PLO, Saeb Erkat, said the decision is reckless, irresponsible, and a threat to peace in the Middle East. This, is, this, this administration constitutes a real threat on world peace and security. And as Palestinians, we will stand tall with international law. We know we are under occupation. The statements of uh, Secretary Pompeo is, and as far as we're concerned, is null and void. It's um, an absolute departure of the Trump's administration from the squares of international law. And once you depart the squares of international law, you open the squares of chaos, terrorism, extremism, violence, and corruption. The United Nations has rejected a recent statement by the United States Secretary of State Mike Pompeo seeking to legitimize the Israeli settlements in Palestine. Our correspondent, Liane Cruz, reports from Cairo. Desde hace años, la comunidad internacional for years, international bodies have called Israeli settlements in Palestine illegal. As such, there has been with its first rejection to recent comments by Mike Pompeo, who said that the U.S. recognized the legitimation of these settlements. According to experts, this is a strategic move by President Donald Trump to support Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu as he grabs a power. Palestinian authorities strongly condemned this announcement as President Mohammed Abbas said that the U.S. continues to lose credibility. He also made the U.S. responsible for any consequences that might follow. The PLL says that the U.S. has no right to rewrite international law and alter the global order. Other Arab nations like Egypt and Jordan have expressed their support for the resolution of the UN Security Council. The foreign minister of Jordan have said that this was an illegal act by the US. Even the European Union has called on Israel to stop spreading their illegal settlements. But this is not the first time that the US has protected the illegal tactics of Israel. As in 2017, President Donald Trump recognized Jerusalem as the capital of Israel and moved their embassy to that. In Africa, the streets of Algeria's capital were filled with protesters on Tuesday who were rejecting a presidential election scheduled for December 12th. The protesters have argued that the election will not change anything, as the presence of the same political figures in the government means the election cannot be free or fair. On Monday, four demonstrators were jailed for 18 months for disrupting a candidate's presidential campaign. According to authorities, the election is as a means to an end to the protests, which erupted in February. We went out today with the same demands, which are the departure of the gang that is running the country. The result is already known, an election so transparent that we already know who the next president will be. And we are against the arrests of those detained for their opinions. We are out to remove them all. We don't want the vote. Well, we say that all the candidates are Buteflika. All of them work for Buteflika. And if we vote for them, it will end up like Buteflika's time in power. Presidential candidates in Guinea-Bissau have held rallies to wind up campaigning ahead of next week's election. The incumbent president, Jose Mario Vaz, held a rally in Bolama, where he told his supporters that order would be restored once he is re-elected. Vaz is the first democratically elected president in Guinea-Bissau's history to finish his term. He's up for re-election, but is facing stiff competition from several opponents, including former Prime Minister Carlos Gomez. My hands are clean. My hands are not soaked with blood. I don't want to see any more blood in Guinea-Bissau. You will never see these hands take what doesn't belong to them. I never received the people's money. My hands have never touched the drugs. We don't want drugs in Guinea-Bissau. No, no drugs. 
And we end in the United Kingdom, where in the first televised debate ahead of the December 12th general election, Prime Minister Boris Johnson faced off with Labour Party leader Jeremy Corbyn on various issues, including Brexit, the economy and Prince Andrew. I would like the EU 27, all of them, uh, because uh, <laughs> they did me a fantastic deal, uh, which enables us to come out of the EU. And I have yet to hear, and I'm going to ask him again. Okay, uh, thank but you. I, I, I've yet to hear what thank the leader of the opposition indeed. would do okay. with his deal I'm, and whether he campaigned for leave or remain. I feel obliged to ask this question. Mr. Johnson, Mr. Corbyn. This is a once in a generation election to end privatisation and give the National Health Service the funding it needs, to give people the final say and get Brexit sorted, to tackle the climate emergency that threatens our futures, to invest in good jobs in every region and nation of our country. I ask that you vote for hope and vote for Labour on the 12th of December. And with that, we've come to the end of this news brief. You can find these and many other stories on our website at telethroughenglish.net. And join us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. For Telesur English, I'm Doris Polo. Thank you for watching.